Hello students, Mr. Courtney here. In this video, I'm going to be talking about chemical reactions and more specifically about balancing chemical reactions. So our objectives for this will be to identify and define the products reactants in a chemical reaction, define chemical reaction, and we'll be looking at balancing chemical equations. So we start with a chemical reaction. What is a chemical reaction? A chemical reaction basically occurs when substances react to form new combination of substances. So we start with one set of substance or substances and then we get different substances at the end. So this is an example of a reaction occurring. It gives us the chemical equation for what occurred. Is it tells us what products we what substances sorry we start with and what substances we end with. So a chemical equation basically describes what happens in a chemical reaction. It tells us what we start with, what we end with. It could be in the equation form, like this here. So this tells us what we start with, and this tells us what we end with. So what does that mean? It can be re written in the equation form as we have it, or it can also be written in a word form. Because what it tells us is that calcium carbonate decomposes to produce calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So we have reactants in a chemical equation or in a reaction. The reactants are the substances that interact at the beginning of the reaction. So the substances we start with, and these substances are always gonna be found on the left of the equation. So this is the left side of the equation here. This will be our right side. So on the left side of this arrow here, everything will be called reactants. Now, how do we identify reactants if we're given in the worded form? All right, so there are several ways we can identify reactants. So some examples would be things like when we say something burns or combust. If we say something rusts, it decomposes, it corrodes, breaks down into, those kind of things will tell us that a chemical reaction is occurring and that we're talking about the reactants of a chemical reaction. On the flip side, we have what we call products. Now, products are the substances that are formed during the reaction, are made from the reaction. And these are always gonna be found on the right side of the arrow, All right? So these are the substances that we end up with, that are made. How do we identify products? The products are what we say they are produced in the reaction. So some examples of words that can help you to identify products will be the word produces. We said something is produced. If it forms, it yields, it gives, it makes. All these are terms that we can use to identify when we're talking about the products of a chemical reaction. Now, a skeleton equation. All a skeleton equation shows us is the reactants and the products, and it's on balance. What does that mean? It means that they're on equal amounts of each element on both sides of the equation. So when we look at the elements on the reactant side and the elements on the product side, they're not gonna be the same. So it shows us what is occurring before the equation is balanced. Now, this is an example of a skeleton equation. And in this case, the skeleton equation is the same as the balanced equation. And we'll talk shortly about how to identify a balanced equation. How do we identify a balanced equation? First thing we need to know, what is a balanced equation? In a balanced equation, we have the same amount of each element on both sides of the equation. So here we see this is balanced because we have potassium, potassium. We have two on, the, two on the left and we have one, two on the right. Chlorine, we have one, two and one, two. So we have equal amounts of potassium on the left and on the right and we have equal amounts of chlorine on the left and on the right. So we term this equation as being balanced. Now these numbers at the front, what do they represent? They represent what we call coefficients. So coefficients are used to show what we say relative amounts. But what we really mean is that they show the number of moles of each substance in the reaction. So when we talk about a chemical reaction occurring, we say potassium reacts with chlorine to form potassium chloride. This is what this reaction here is telling us. 
But if it's not balanced, all, all we know is that potassium and chlorine react to give us potassium chloride. It doesn't tell us how much potassium and chlorine is used or how much potassium chloride is produced. So that's the job of the coefficients. It tells us the relative amounts or the number of moles of each substance in the reaction. So when we have coefficients, the coefficients multiply throughout the, scrubs, the subscripts. So that means we're going to take our coefficient and multiply it by the subscripts. And there is not a subscript present, remember that this is simply 1. So for carbon, we'll have 2 times 1, so we have 2 carbon, 4 oxygen. With 3 H2Os, we'll have 6 hydrogen, 3 oxygens. In the next one, we have 4 calcium, 8 bromides, 10 sodium, and 5 oxides. So remember the subscripts multiply throughout by the coefficient. Multiply the subscripts by our coefficient. Okay, so let's look at determining if an equation is balanced or not. Remember, we need to have equal amounts of each reactant on the or each substance or each element rather on the reactant side as we have on the product side. So we look at aluminum. We have aluminum on the left and aluminum on the right, oxygen on the left, oxygen on the right. So aluminum on the left, we have one. Aluminum on the right, we're gonna have two. For oxygen on the reactant side, right here, we have two. And on the product side, we have three. So they are unequal. That means that this reaction is not balanced. Let's look at another one. So we have the elements potassium, hydrogen, and oxygen. So we start with potassium on the left, on the reactant side, we have two atoms of potassium. On the product side, we also have two. We have four atoms of hydrogen on the left. Let's remember we have two times two. And on the right, we have two plus two. And how do we get that two plus two? So we have two times one here. So that gives us the first two. And then two hydrogens here, that gives us a second two. So we have a total of four hydrogens on the right, on the product side. Now on the reactant side, we have two oxygens and two oxygens. So since all the elements are balanced on the left and on the right, so we have equal amounts of each element on the reactant and product side that tells us the equation is balanced. So let's look at this one. Aluminum, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So we look at aluminum on the left, let's look at the subscript. So we have four, and on the right product side we have one. Carbon on the reactant side we have three, and on the product side we have one. For hydrogen, we have two on the, on the reactant side, and on the product side we have seven. So how did we get that seven? We have four. And we have one here, but we have to multiply it by the three, the subscript three on the outside. Because that tells us we have three of the hydroxide. Each hydroxide has one hydrogen. So if we have three, we have a total of three hydrogens. So the three plus the four gives us seven. For oxygen, we have one and three. So that equation is not balanced. Let's look at this one. Lithium, iodide, iodine, lead, and we'll keep the nitrate together since it's a polyatomic ion. And the reason we can keep it together is because we start with nitrate, NO3, and we end with NO3. So we can keep it as though it's an element. And in some cases, some people will tell you, oh, you can ignore the nitrates because if everything else is balanced, then the nitrates or the polyatomic ions will balance themselves. And I'm going to show you with the polyatomic ion involved. So we do lithium. The coefficient in front lithium is two, so that means we have two atoms of lithium. On the right, the coefficient is also two. On our product side, that means we have two lithium atoms. For iodide, we have two on our reactant side. We also have two on the product side. For lead, we have one on the reactant side and one on our product side. Now for our nitrate, we have two of it, and we also have a coefficient of two here. So that means we have two on the reactant side and two on the product side. 
and now everything is balanced on the reactants and product side so that tells us yes this equation is balanced okay so now that we were able to identify a balanced equation let's look at how do we balance a chemical equation so you're given a chemical equation and you're asked to balance it now this method we're using and i'm using to introduce it to you is called the accounting method so that way we look at how much we have on the reactant side and how much we have on the product side and we move from there on so the first step determine the amount of each element present so for nitrogen we have two on the reactant side two on the product side oxygen we have two on the reactant side five on the product side step two identify which element is keeping the equation from being balanced so we see here that oxygen is keeping this equation from being balanced so we identify it and we move on to step three. add coefficients to make the element balance so we look at oxygen which is two on the reactant and five so we find the lowest common multiple of two and five which is ten so what do i need to do to opt to two to make it ten I put a coefficient of 5 on the left side. What do I do to 5 to make it 10? So that means I put a coefficient of 2 in front of oxygen on the right side. No, that changes the balance of everything. So what we need to do now is recalculate the amount of each element present. So we need to calculate how many nitrogens we have. The amount on the reactant side does not change. The amount on the product side now becomes 4. All right, we get that as 2 times 2. Now oxygen becomes 10 and 10. So we balanced oxygen, but no, nitrogen is not balanced. So that means we add coefficient to make the other element that is, has been unbalanced correct. And then we need to recalculate. So how do I make 2 and 4? What is the lowest common multiple of 2 and 4? That is 4. So on the left side, I need to put a coefficient of 2. And on the right side, I don't do anything. So we need to recalculate now. 4 nitrogens, 4 nitrogens. 10 oxygens, 10 oxygens. Now the equation is balanced. We've gotten to the, we've come to the, we stop adding coefficients once we balanced it. Okay. So let's look at another example. All right. So we have lead, iodine, sodium, and our polyatomic ion of nitrate. So first step, determine the amount of each element, or in this case, each substance present, or each species. So we have lead, one on the left, one on the right. For iodide, one atom, we have two atoms on the right. Sodium, one and one. For our nitrate, we have two nitrate ions on the left and two one nitrate ion on the right so we need to identify which substance is keeping it from being balanced we have iodide and we have nitrate so let's do so how can we add coefficients so we want to get one and the two balance. so what if we add a coefficient of two in front of the sodium iodide so we add our coefficient of two and we read oh. So we have lead one and one, iodide now becomes two and two, sodium is two and one, nitrate is two and one. So what is keeping it from being balanced now? All right? So sodium and iodide, sodium is not balanced now, so we need to do something to balance the sodium. So what are we gonna do? Put a coefficient of two in front in front of sodium nitrate. Now we recalculate again one and one for, for lead reactant product side for iodide or iodine we have two and two so that's balanced what sodium now is two and two nitrate is two and two so now we have everything balanced we don't need to add that we know we have our balanced equation so that is simply the long and short of how to go ahead and balance and chemical equations so you can go over it again take your time make sure you understand this and we've gotten to the end of this so until the next time blessings i'm out